call you a hero and put hair in there. I am your host, Benjamin Jay, and this is the Form and Function Salon Podcast. It is not the Tide Pod Flavor Podcast. Don't eat those. I don't know why people are eating those. 2018, and we have people drinking and eating soap. So, that's an interesting one, especially because what I'm going to talk about today is how we go about choosing our bubbles, our suds, our liquid tools. What goes into choosing a product line that you're going to support and bring into your salon? It's like putting it in your house. How do you find a partner that you want to work with and support? So a little bit about our history here. I'm um, just jumping straight in. You can, of course, subscribe and follow us at FF Salon EDU on Instagram. I am at BNJMNJ. Uh, our history here with product lines. For a long time, our main line was Paul Mitchell. Uh, the way that we got into it was way back when, when my mom first graduated beauty school. She was fortunate enough to get a job in New York at a company called the Crimpers. The Crimpers were owned by Bindles, and the artistic director for the company at the time was none other than Paul Mitchell, the man himself. So fast forward, uh, my mom and my dad chose to open our salon in 1980. Paul Mitchell, of course, started in 1980. And in 1982, they came to the Chicago market. My mom, along with a number of other stylists that we had on our team, all had great memories and really liked working with Paul. And the company had started to build a name for itself and was really getting a lot of attention and traction. And so it was kind of a no-brainer for them to bring them on and work with them. Over the years, for a long time, they had many other lines. You know, I remember us having Aveda before Aveda went very exclusive. We had KMS, Artec, Redkin, uh, Crew. And so like the list goes on. So we've tried a lot of different things. About 10 years ago or so, we decided that, you know, the one constant that had always been our best seller was Paul Mitchell. And so we wanted to go the focus route and just be a single line. Now the thing with that was that even with being a single line, you still had multiple brands. And so it didn't really feel like you were a one line salon because you know within Paul Mitchell, if you guys are or aren't familiar with them, they have their classic black and white line, they have Awa Pui, they have a men's brand, they have uh, a little bit more of a, I guess, an earthy vibe with tea tree. And so we didn't necessarily feel like it was a single line option. Then about a year ago, we decided to switch things up. We wanted to go in a different direction and, uh, you know, have a little bit more of a boutique kind of vibe. And so we made some changes and that sort of catches us up to today. So how did we go about choosing a brand? How do we go about choosing a manufacturer that we wanted to work with and what we wanted to? And maybe you're looking at changing things up. And so I think that it's really important for us to think about if take home is going to be a part of our business and a part of our salon, it has to be the right fit. You know, just putting shampoo on the shelf isn't going to sell it. But choosing something that you believe in is going to help motivate you and help inspire you, if you will, to want to get it into your guest's hands over and above just seeing that that is part of the service that you provide them. So the first thing that I would recommend you doing is make a decision based on values. Can you find a company that you believe in and that you, you know that the character of the company is true to what you want it to be? The company that we ended up choosing as our, as our sort of classic in our main line here at Hairlock is Davines. If you're not familiar with Davines, they are a brand based out of Parma, Italy. They started back in 1983, I believe, as a husband and wife named Davide and Inez. They've grown to a global company and now you know, Davide and Inez, I, I believe that they're a little older. Um, I don't know if they're active in the company at all anymore, but it's been taken over by their son. And so, of course, that story very much resonated with us. And their mission is sustainable beauty. And I think that that is such a, a necessity in today's world with companies that are operating on a global scale to really be conscious of what goes into their product, how that affects their users, how that affects stylists, and the packaging and the resourcing and everything that goes into it because they are making a very big footprint 
on the world. And so do I believe in that? I do. And they've gone above and beyond to get the certifications and go through independent testing to make sure that it's not just marketing, that it's not just speak, that it is something that, that they truly live up to. Another brand that we brought on that was our, uh, I guess more of our contemporary and kind of fun line is Evo. Evo is a brand based out of Australia and their mission is truth and honesty and beauty. And I really think that that's great because oftentimes, as they say, there's too much fake innovation in the beauty world. Things come up, they're called you know, the super awesome magnetic beautifying complex and it's like, all right, that's not stuff. All you do is put vitamin C in it. Another challenge is that people get on trendy ingredients. Oh, it's got argon oil. Well, okay, but it only has enough in it to pass as uh, what the requirement is for advertising purposes and it's not an active ingredient, so it's not actually even doing anything in the hair. So Evo's point is that all of their ingredients are active ingredients and that there is nothing added to the bottle for just marketing. And that both those messages I felt resonated very much with me and I believe in those purposes. I believe in the same thing. And so it makes it much easier for me to be able to recommend them to my clients because not just based off of the performance, but based off of the purpose. I connect there and so I want to relay that to my clients. The next one that I would recommend you looking into is what is the brand of the company? And do they complement you? So if I were to give an, a generic example, let's say that we had a very family friendly salon, you know, uh, very homey, very welcoming kind of vibe. But the product line that they have on the shelf is a very trendy, very sexy, very editorial style imagery and products. Well, that doesn't really fit very well, does it? Right, and I think that that's a very obvious example that we can look at. One of the things this past year that we also looked at replacing was our men's line. And so I really researched a lot about men's lines. And the thing that I found was this weird sort of like Venn diagram where Stuff either looked really, really generic and was like everywhere. It was, uh, you know, just very mainstream, which was the opposite of what I was trying to go for. Then there was another side that was really, really barbershoppy and, you know, was very rugged and also not what I wanted and stuff that was just kind of like cheesy. And so I was happy that I ended up finding a company called Baxter of California and they had a really rich history talking about, uh, they started, I believe in the 1960s with skincare for men and just continued to add on to their product catalog. And now they, they offer everything. And what I also realized was that I had been using one of their shave products for five years before researching that they had any uh, men's hair care. And so I was, I was a customer before I was a partner, which I thought was great. But the point was that Baxter's branding fit us, it complemented us. It looks like an upscale men's line that suits the type of individual, type of man that we have coming to Hairloft. One company that I think is awesome is the, I always mispronounce it, but the Ruzel hair care stuff. They're from the, the showroom barbers up in Rotterdam and their stuff is awesome, it is killer. And you know the packaging looks cool, their education and their videos look cool, but it doesn't fit hair loft. And so if I were to bring that in and put it on the shelf, I feel that from a brand perspective, as cool as that stuff is, it doesn't complement what hair loft is and so it doesn't fit us. Okay, so speaking of not fitting us, another aspect to consider is the price point. Now, our haircuts here at Hairloft, we start at $60, whether it's men or women. For the most part, everything within all of our product lines varies somewhere between uh, about $20 to $40. There's some things that are you know, a little less, some things are a little more. But for the most part, we're in that range. I think, while I don't have a formula for this, I think that a $20 to $40 price point from a $60 service works very well. I don't know that a $20 to $40 price point on product would work really well if our haircuts were only $25 or $30.
I think that at that point, you're asking for a very large increase on a guest service. One of the problems that I often hear from stylists and salon owners is that their guests are very budget conscious. And so they don't want to spend more money in the salon that they don't have to. And that, you know, okay. But if that's going to be the case, then we need to work around it and have offerings for budget conscious clients. We can't be offering, you know, luxury hair care brands and things like Orbe. I don't have any uh, experience with Orbe, but I believe that they have some fairly high price points. And so if I have a $30 or $40 haircut, but then the shampoo that I'm using is $62, well, that just doesn't make any sense. And it's a little bit based off of brand, but it's also just common sense thinking about if our customers are price conscious, then we need to have price conscious offerings in order to have the things that they are going to want to purchase. If we have the things that they want to purchase at a price point that they're comfortable, I bet that your retail sales would go up because it would be the perfect fit, would it not? The next area that I have on here is called support. Uh, first thing of support that I, I would add, and, and I'm pausing here, and you, you can probably tell that there's some hesitation. The reason is, in these two things that I have, I don't feel are as important to me personally. And I'll, I'll kind of come back to this after it. But I would say education. Now, from an education perspective, does your manufacturer offer things? And do they offer things that are actual education and not just product knowledge and sales? I think that for the longest time, salons have turned to manufacturers for all of the answers. The manufacturers have been willing to come up with answers for anything that people needed, but it, they place themselves first. And so a lot of times those education classes and things that you sit in and you listen to, at the end of the day, they come back to, hey, buy our product and here's how you sell our product. Oh, right and uh, this was the haircut that we did. And then the next one, I guess, would be back bar. You know, do you have rewards points that you can use for them to fill in and get your back bar support so that you can you know, save money and cut your costs? And do they offer branding support? You know, are there things that they can help you with imagery or you know, sampling, uh, in salon, uh, branding opportunities? <clears throat> and so, the hesitation that I have here, I get that some, some people do need the, the help for those things. For me, when it comes to education, I would much rather support independent education because I think it's a more pure form of education. As long as somebody is knowledgeable and uh, you know, a great presenter and great educator, I want the pure knowledge on how to do the technique. I don't really care what lightener you're using. I don't really care what styling foam you're using to do it. I, I know my product, I know the stuff that I have on the shelf. I want to know the education and I want to know the technique. The back bar stuff, that will be helpful, right? Because that will help cut your costs. But in terms of branding, you as a salon owner or as a stylist, you need to be building your brand first, not your manufacturer's brand. And I know that, that they try to present it as a way of, you know, partner with us and you get to use this global brand in addition to yours. That can have a positive and a negative. You know, Yes, there are people that are going to like those products, but if they've ever had a negative reaction to that product, then they are probably going to pass your salon by simply because they don't like what they used or what another stylist may have recommended at a previous salon. And so your brand is way more important also, when we hang posters in the salon that are from a manufacturer, I'm not a fan of hanging work that isn't your own, but I really cannot stand when people hang work that they know that they could not recreate. And why would you want to have the same image that every other salon that carries that brand has hanging in their salon? You know, be unique, be you, put your work up on the wall. The printer that I use, I think for us to get our own images printed is like 20 bucks. 
keep them up for a couple of months, and then I send them an image, and I replace it, and I get another one. I'd rather have our stylist work up on the wall so that people walk in and go, wow, a hair loft stylist did that, as opposed to, well, this is what came from the artistic director from some product company. Now for the section that I would say is like an asterisk, because I don't know how much you would factor this into choosing a product manufacturer as a partner. And that is their distribution. Distribution is important, right? Because when you want the product, you're gonna need it. And so from a distribution standpoint, that is the bar none, the basement level. When I need the product, I gotta have the product. But there is still a big difference between distributors and how much they care and what are they going to do to help you. I like working with, with independent distributors you know, again, it's kind of our vibe, more boutique vibe, more personal. It also helps support local. So in Illinois, I really like working with professional salon concepts. I feel like they go above and beyond in terms of support. Uh, I've worked with Sullivan Beauty before out on the East Coast, uh, in New England territory. They are fantastic. Uh, in Michigan and Ohio, uh, they just changed their name, Monaco. They, they're fantastic. And the reason that I like all of them is that they have a dedication to their customers. Of course, everybody wants to increase sales, right? But they put in the programs that allow you, you to be a business partner and not just looked at as a number to push bottles into. Uh, make sure that you, you like your sales rep because they are your contact. I had one uh, situation where I liked a brand but I really did not care for how the sales rep tried to handle their business. You know, I knew what I wanted. I just wanted, you know, the information that I had asked for. And every time they came in, they tried to push another brand on me and sell me more stuff. So I did everything I could to try and avoid working with that distributor. I, I contacted the, uh, the manufacturer to see if we could go direct. I contacted the, uh, a distributor in another state to see if they could bypass it and uh, you know I just kind of decided that maybe it wasn't for us if I really had to work that hard but so that would be an example where you know if you don't feel like you're gonna that you have the right vibe or that you're not gonna connect then don't connect you know choose something else because there's a lot of other things that you probably will like that can work really well and uh, are they earning it you know what are what are they doing to support you you know, do they go above and beyond? This is actually interesting doing this now. This past weekend, I just saw that uh, that distributor that I mentioned, Sullivan Beauty in New England, that they were actually running on behalf of their salons a Facebook ad for uh, Leader Duo sale going on right now. And so pushing it out to people in the area to use the salon locator to then find the, sal the salon that carried the duo within the area. I had never seen that before, and I thought that it was awesome. So I reached out to those guys and I said, this is amazing, the fact that you're doing this for your customers, because doing targeted advertising through Facebook is probably something that many salon owners and stylists maybe don't have the knowledge to do it, or don't have the time, or don't have the resources. And so that's the kind of idea of going above and beyond for customers that I think is extremely valuable and shows that they are willing to work for their customers to earn the business that they are trying to you know, help you build. So there you go, values, brand, support, and their distribution. Uh, so that's what I was looking for. You know? And I, I've been really happy with Davines and Evo and our Baxter editions over the past year and the performance on all those has been awesome. Uh, this probably sounds a bit like a commercial for every product line that we have but that was not my intention at all. I really wanted to give you an idea, an insight into how to choose your stuff. You know, to a certain degree, every shampoo is gonna be the same. Every foam is gonna be foam. And uh, it's important to find the stuff that you believe in because if you believe in it, it makes sales much easier. So with that, until the next episode, I would love your feedback. How did you choose the brands that you are representing right now? I think that it would be really interesting to hear from you. So email me, 
ben at thehairloftltd.com. You can follow me on Instagram at bnjmnjy. It's Benjamin J minus the vowels. And until the next episode, I really want to see you continue to live your successful lifestyle.